Hello, it is Wo Wo Woden's Day again, and let's start with the Fed and total debt balance and its composition. This is debt in the United States, and it is at about twelve trillion dollars for this particular aspect of it, which is mortgage, revolving auto loan, credit card, student loan, and other mainly obviously mortgages making up most of that in orange below student loans is going up the rest is just about flat and in an economy predicated on borrowing and more borrowing as you can see this goes back to 1999 and how it was going up pretty up up um, that is um, economy shakingly not good Total balance by delinquency status is the next one. And first thing to note is that this is just the top of a chart. And if we looked at the chart, that dark green, which is current, people being current on their loans, goes an awful long way down. And we can note as well, um, going back to, to, in, to 2005 and a half, the good old days, 95% plus of people were current on all their loans. They'd take out a loan, agree to pay the interest and the principal back, and would do so. And it's just extended at the margins now that they are not doing so. That's se severely derogatory. Defaulted in red has expanded, and 120 day late uh, effectively defaulted has expanded um, and the system is not set up for that sort of on the margin defaults mish who is still hot 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 because he can sniff that there is deflation out there in the world gives us us japan germany uk yes the uk as well yield curve data points and notes at the bottom that these data points are a sign of enormous global weakness. Those banking on a huge second half recovery are doing more wishing than thinking. And with this we get a chart yield curve comparison for US, Japan, Germany and the UK. And you can see very similar shapes with a strange turn up at the left hand end, the short end for Germany, which is normally a sign that there is going to be a recession. And you've got to go out over three years noted on these countries bonds to get over a yield of 1%. Three years to get over 1%. People are scared out there. Economic monitor Nouril Rubini and is capitalism doomed? Uh, about this time last year, Nouril, Nouril was saying that the double dipper was about a 40% possibility, which is a bit of a naughty thing to say because you can't really go wrong at that. But this time he's saying it's much more probable. I'll read from the article, which is a good summation of the overall macroeconomic situation out there. So Karl Marx, it seems, was partly right in arguing that globalization, financial intermediation run amok, and redistribution of income and wealth from labor to capital could lead capitalism to self-destruct, though his view that socialism would be better has proven wrong. Firms are cutting jobs because there is not enough final demand. But cutting jobs reduces labour income, increases inequality and reduces final demand. Recent popular demonstrations from the Middle East to Israel to the UK and rising popular anger in China and soon enough in the other advanced economies and emerging markets are all driven by the same issues and tensions. Growing inequality, poverty, unemployment and hopelessness. Even the world's middle classes are feeling the squeeze of falling incomes and opportunities. The same Economonitor which is Nouriel's open blog site. 
Edward Hugh writes a very long, very, very long article, you could even say, called Going Dutch, One Possible Solution to the Euro Debt Crisis, which is in its way um, an essay perfectly describing the entire Euro fiasco. Edward Hugh, uh, 15 years ago, was among the economists that were, was telling the Euro politicians how they were setting up huge problems going forward with their idea of how the Euro might work and how they weren't setting it up very cleverly and it was going to cause problems down the road. And okay, so Edward Hugh can say, I told you so, but this whole article isn't that at all. It is a, just, just a description of the facts and his laying out what the ways out could possibly be. We'll start with looking back over the last 18 months of Europe's debt crisis. European Central Bank Executive Board member Lorenzo Benschmaghi recently invoked Winston Churchill's famous quip, You can always count on the Americans to do the right thing after they've tried everything else. Now, I've heard this quite a lot. That you can count on the Americans to do the right thing after they've tried everything else. Being described for the Americans and for other institutions, countries, firms, central banks, politicians, all sorts, because all of these um, powers that be seem to be always be doing the right thing. But as we... Um, we'll see in this article and is prevalent through what most of things I say is they're only doing the wrong thing because there is not a right thing that they can do. Moving on. Large structural, large structural distortions were able to build up over the earlier years of the currency's life but now it's hard to see where the much needed remedies are to come from. Structural distortions are the periphery were given money and cheap interest rates and developed their economies on those uh, free money and cheap interest rates. And now that those have gone away, the economy is, their economies are structurally in the wrong place. Some sort of fiscal union is now widely, if belatedly, seen as forming a necessary part of a well-functioning monetary union, but trying to introduce one at this stage in the game, when many of the countries along the periphery have suffered a substantial competitiveness loss in relation to those in the core, seems to lead to only one conclusion, the kind of transfer union that so worries Christian Reinemann and so many of his fellow citizens um, obviously this is from the middle of the article which I said is long so um, referring to something earlier in the article later we get the only real way forward is for those who have lost competitiveness to somehow regain it this as we are seeing is far easier said than done most of the proposals which have come from the EU Commission and the IMF to date involve some kind of micro-level productivity enhancing structural reforms, but these are not able to raise growth rates sufficiently quickly. Indeed, there is very little evidence of the extent to which they are able to do this in any event, and inevitably involve the countries involved trying to out Germany the Germany, the Germans, which culturally on its face seems to present them with an impossible challenge, especially when the German companies are hardly make marking time themselves. In other words, they're trying to make Ireland, Portugal, Greece, Italy, Spain like Germany, and it can't happen. And even in trying it, it's impossible because Germany's not standing still to be caught up anyway. So with fiscal union effectively off the table, we're later in the article now, effectively, uh, fiscal union is effectively off the table and Edward has 
described why it is off the table. There are basically three possibilities. The first is to stay more or less where we are, maintaining and even expanding the bond purchasing program of the ECB and simply trying to hang on in there, which obviously must be favourite to bully the ECB into buying the bond with um, free money rather than tax, tax money from the citizens of Europe. The second possibility would be to disband the Union entirely, leaving everyone to go back to their own national currency. Now this isn't just been thrown together lightly by Edward Hugh, and he's not just saying the spot, second possibility would be to disband as though it was something he wanted. This is because he has analysed all the other possibilities. Fortunately, there is a third alternative, even if it is one that appears no more appetising than the other two. And this is another problem. There is no appetising solution. The Eurozone could be split into two, creating two different Euro currencies. And he gives us a chart of how it might work, with France being the, the, the probable, the, 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 the swing. Would sw um, France join Germany or join the Mediterranean nations? But you can imagine, this is Edward Hughes' most viable proposition. And how likely is it that the Eurozone is going to split into two? And if it did, what would be the ramifications for the world? Right, moving on. Edward Harrison at credit write-downs on Eurobonds and the Italian default. There were a lot of rumours flying around in the German press this weekend. The two themes that were most prevalent were Eurobonds and a potential sovereign default by Italy. Um, Edward Harrison is one of the um, rarer American economists that speaks German, among other languages, so reads these in the vernacular. I wrote that despite official denials by top politicians from the ruling coalition government, euro bonds are indeed being considered as an option to save the single currency. Now, I've heard that the official denials and the Financial Times has reported that euro bonds are not going to happen. Nevertheless, I do believe Die Welt's account is credible. In other words, when it comes to it, um, Merkel might say they're impossible, they're off the table, but when they are the only easy option, and then it's not even an easy option, it's the, uh, the l l least horrible option, then they might have to go through. But um, back in Germany, the politicians are jockeying to try and take advantage of this. Um, there is a political party that has been losing a lot in the elections lately, so is taking on an anti-eurobond um, stance. So they would pick up the negative um, votes from the German people. But repeat that, strangely, the German po politicians are very pro-Europe and will do anything to keep it together but not the people. Edward Harrison again, the European sovereign debt crisis is a solvency crisis. Now I've just put this in just for the headline. You can read the article, which is good enough. But the European sovereign debt crisis is a sol solvency crisis. How many times have we said this for so many different aspects of the economic world at the moment? It's not liquidity that's needed. It's actual solvency. Uh, the they're insolvent, they're bankrupt, they do not have what it takes to pay their debts. Mish, hitting it hard again, will finish with BNP Paribas, leveraged 27 to 1 and Societe Generale leveraged 50 to 1. Sorry, state of affairs of US banks and global financial system is bankrupt. And that's where I'll leave it with um, that exclamation mark. That the global financial system is bankrupt. So what do you do about that? Panic. Don't panic. What difference does it make? If you're bankrupt, you're bankrupt. Bye.